Have you ever pondered to yourself, what's the most reliable, dependable, indestructible truck ever built? It's not your Chevy Bruce, it's not your Ford Dale, sorry Bill, it's not your Dodge either. It's a 1980s Toyota pickup truck. And I don't wanna say that they're the cockroach of trucks because that has a negative connotation, but they're the cockroach of trucks. You can step on them, spray them, light them on fire, drown them in the ocean, blow them up in a concrete building, and they still won't quit. So the only question I have is, how? How is a seemingly basic, no frills truck from the late 80s one of the toughest vehicles ever built? Well, it boils down to one word, and that word, simplicity. So today, we're gonna to talk about the simple elements that make the Toyota pickup the most indestructible truck ever made. We're gonna look at specifically two things, its frame and its engine. Let's do it. I drove mine without engine oil for two months straight. I was an idiot. Thanks for keeps for sponsoring this episode of Bumper to Bumper. If you love your hair as much as I do, oh. Yeah, I love my hair, mm. And you wanna keep it right here on top of your beautiful head? Well, listen up, cause two out of three guys will experience some form of nail pattern baldness by the time they're 35. And the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. If you knew right now that you, with your head and its full luscious hair on top of it, would turn into a barren patch of head skin, would you do nothing to stop it? Come on! Keeps treatments really work to help your hair stay there. And the sooner you start using it, the more hair you'll save. Save all those future little hair babies. Save them, give them a chance. You can visit a doctor online and get hair loss medication delivered right to your door every three months so you don't even need to leave your house. That's kind of good right now. And if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash B2B or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash B2B. Thank you for supporting the companies that support us here at Donut. We love you. If you live in the States, Toyota didn't give their trusty truck the Hilux badging. From 1976 to 1994, Toyota didn't even give the truck any sort of proper name. They literally called it the Toyota Pickup. That's it which is actually the perfect name. They didn't need some fancy naming device because what made the Toyota truck great was the fact that it was simple. They didn't give a truck. There's no airbags, no windows, no power locks, no power seats, no AC. Some models didn't even have full door panels. They used bench cloth seats, manual locking hubs, no tack. It was a bare bones, mighty little pickup truck built in a time when trucks were utilitarian workhorses. No frills, just function. And when you make stuff simple, less stuff breaks. And the backbone that made this truck so hardy was its frame. Specifically, that it had a fully boxed frame. Now during that time, it's competition in the lightweight truck division. We're talking about the Ford Ranger and the Chevy S10. They were built using a C-channel frame. So what's the difference between the two and why is one better than the other? Now the frame is the backbone of the automobile. And for body on frame vehicles, like a truck, the frame is made up of rails or beams welded or bolted together in a specific way that gives the frame its structure. Now these rails or channels, as we can call them, are usually made of steel and they have a specific shape that give the frame its structural rigidity. And there are two types of designs for these channels. Now if you take a piece of steel, for example, and you fold it at two points, it creates an open-ended channel. And if you were to look at a cross-section of it, it would look like a C, hence the name C-channel. Now the C-channel is one of the most common types of frames used in vehicles. Now the other design is what's called the box frame. And the box frame is when you take that open part of the C-channel and you add a fourth side to it, making it a box. And the channel is fully enclosed along the length of the frame in what's called a fully boxed frame. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of each of these and why did Toyota go with the box frame style with their pickup? Starting with the C-channel, 
it's cheaper. Welcome to Economics 101, you're on your way to making money. If you can make a mass produced item using a fundamental part that is cheaper, you save more money and therefore you make more money. And the cost is driven down because it takes less time to manufacture a C-channel. You're essentially just making two bins in the metal and that's it. That is a oversimplification of course, but you get my point. The process is cheaper. And the second benefit is that they're easier to bolt stuff onto the frame. For all intents and purposes, it's just a thick plate of steel. So you can drill holes, you can bolt brackets, you can do whatever you want, just start adding parts to it. It's much easier. Another so-called benefit of C-channels is that the frame flexes to allow for some of the road bumps to be absorbed by the frame itself so that the suspension has less work to do. The frame is part of the suspension design. And sure, okay, I'll entertain this. This is what C-channel fanboys are wanting you to believe. But I would be in the camp that your suspension design should be focused on the suspension. But maybe I'm wrong, okay? Maybe I'm wrong. And maybe so is every race car builder out there. The reason race car builders build frames that don't flex is because they don't want it flexing. When that happens, it turns your frame into another spring that you can't control. You want all of those motions to be controlled by the dampers in the springs of your suspension. So you can change your shocks out and change settings all you want, but you can't change your frame out. Go ahead, debate it. C-channel versus box frame people, go nuts in the comments. I'll be in the comments in the first hour. Convince me C-channel's better. So that is the benefits of a C-channel. Well, what about the box frame, like the one used in this Toyota pickup? Well, the box frame is more rigid. Think about one of the strongest types of structural members, and that's a tube. Again, there's a reason race cars and race trucks are built with tubes and not open C-channel members. When you close up that channel and you form it into a box, it improves the structural rigidity of the frame. Specifically, they have a higher torsional rigidity. That means they don't twist as much. Also, compared to a C-channel, you don't need as much material. Now, C-channels have to be thicker to make up for that open side, which means for the same torsional rigidity specs, a box frame can actually be lighter. Food for thought. Now, if you need any convincing that a box frame is better than a C-channel, with the exception of three trucks built in 2020, every manufacturer offers a fully boxed frame on their trucks. The three trucks that don't have it, the Ford F550 and the Toyota Tundra and Tacoma. Hold on, what? Toyota switched, went to something worse? Yeah, that's right. More on that reason in a bit. So stick around, it's a juicy explanation. So back in the late 80s and early 90s, when Ford and Chevy were advertising their lightweight trucks with their C-channel frames as being designed to flex for your comfort and your improved ride quality, Toyota, with their pickup, went with the structure of their superior box frame. And this is what makes these trucks off-road, rock-crawling beast. When you're climbing up a rock face, you don't want your frame twisting around, and a box frame prevents that. It also has a stronger payload and towing capacity. Their four x two models were capable of carrying 1,640 pounds and pulling 3,500 pounds. The Chevy S10 of a similar year was only rated at 1,300 pounds and could pull only 2,000 pounds. The Toyota pickup was actually considered a half-ton truck due to its frame and suspension setup. It's pretty cool. They even built a one-ton version that could handle 2,655 pounds of payload and could pull 5,000 pounds. This is a tiny truck. You know how much 5,000 pounds is? I don't know, like two of your mama. Oh! 5,000 pounds, that's a lot of weight. That's about the weight of a small elephant. And most importantly, the stronger frame also lends itself to being better when you smack it with a wrecking ball or you blow it up in a building when the truck's on top of it. So again, there's a reason trucks today use a box frame. It's just better. But like I teased before, why did Toyota do away with their box frame in their current lineup of Tacos and Tundras? Well, it came down to rust. You see, the box frame pickups were great, but they had a design flaw. They weren't built to keep out water or let water drain if any got inside the frame. And water, it absolutely hates steel. It's like the bully at school. He's steel, okay? And you, you're water. You're just a little nerd boy that chips away at him mentally each day, 
slowly but surely. You're breaking down that buff bully who used to beat you up with small jabs of subtle insults that weaken his confidence through subconscious verbiage. You're in it for the long game. He's tough now, but get it 10 years and he'll rust away. You'll be hosting a show at Donut while he's living with his parents in Boca Raton bartending at Rico's sweatshop with his bald head. And he doesn't even know about Keats. Sup Walker, hope you're doing well, buddy. So one reason Toyota might have gone with an open channel frame design in their current lineup of trucks is because they had to spend billions of dollars replacing the rusted frames from older generation pickups. So they thought, hey, we've been down this road, maybe let's limit our risk here. When you lose billions of dollars, someone's getting in trouble. And the guy designing the frame, he screwed up big time. So the next dude in line was like, hey man, let's go, let's go tried and true. I don't want any of these rust problems on my, on my hands. I don't, I don't wanna be a fault for it. And actually they do have what's called a semi box design. So the front part of the frame where the engine sits, that's box, but towards the rear where the trunk bed is and the cab, that's a C channel. So they kind of gave a compromise, but so maybe that's why. I, you know, who knows? I don't work for Toyota, okay? I'm only speculating here. We're in the speculation zone. The speculation zone. So how can a truck with a frame that rusts be considered one of the most reliable trucks? Well, it takes a long time for that to happen and deem the truck inoperable. And in fact, in the case of the Top Gear truck, it was actually the rusted frame that crumpled in a way that kept the entire truck together. So its weakness turned into a strength. And speaking of strengths, let's talk about the other thing that makes this truck so reliable, indestructible, and dependable. And that is its engine. So we get that this Japanese pickup truck can take a lick and keep on ticking, but what's under the hood of this truck that allows it to just drive away from situations that most car would end up being sent to the junkyard? It's time to give a little love to the four cylinder engine. Now there are a bunch of engine varieties that Toyota put in the pickup, gas and diesel both. The Hilux and Top Gear had the little 2.4 liter diesel, which put out a whopping 83 horsepower. It was a trooper. But I wanna focus on another engine in particular, one that was most common in the pickup, and that's the 2.4 liter 22 RE gas engine. And they put this engine in a bunch of cars, the Celica, the Corona, the 4Runner. Toyota used the 22 RE until 1997, that's 15 years. And again, with good reason. The motor was built to last. It was durable and easy to work on. Somebody did it right. 2.4 liter single overhead cam four banger is known to reach well over 500,000 miles. And the reason it's so good is because Toyota had a lot of time to perfect this engine. The 22 RE comes from a family of extremely well-designed engines, the R-Series motors. Toyota first built the R-Series all the way back in the 50s. And this engine was overbuilt with a high nickel content block and a forged crankshaft. The presence of nickel adds strength to the iron block. An alloy of only 5.5% weight of nickel has a strength that is 125% greater than estimates for a pure iron block. And the forged crankshaft is stronger as well. We talked about forged parts in our super episode. Go back and watch it after this. But basically, it means it's stronger. The long stroke, mm, it's in dome pistons coupled with fuel injection help provide good low to mid range torque. Now a longer stroke engine means it does this more. You guys get it. It won't rev as high, but it will produce more torque. And the dome pistons added a small amount of volume increase, which also increases the compression ratio and in turn makes it a bit more power. Toyota even used the 22RE as the power plant in the Celica GTS during its outing in the 1985 Macau Grand Prix, finishing third behind two six cylinder BMWs. They needed two more cylinders. Typical BMW, always trying to compensate. It was the highest finish for any 22RE powered Toyota ever. And Toyota even made a turbo version, the 22RTE. Heck yeah, hashtag boost creeps. Where my turb fans at? So like I said earlier, I actually had a Toyota pickup. It was my first truck, a 1990, 4x4 five speed with the 22 RE. And before I knew how to work on cars or knew anything about engines, I drained what I thought was the engine oil. So I added my engine oil, no filter change because I was a freaking animal, and I drove the truck around like normal. Fast forward a month, it turns out I drained the transmission oil. So 
If you're wondering, well, dude, you added engine oil, didn't you like overfill it? Well, no, because one, I never checked the engine oil because I was an animal. And two, it was so low to begin with that when I added oil during the change, it brought it back up to the normal level. Meaning I ran a 22 RE without engine oil for who knows how long and it ran fine. And I ran it without gear oil for that whole month. Also, my sister sold that truck, which I still get upset about. So if you happen to own a maroon red 1990 Yoda pickup with camo interior, five speed, you live in the Florida area, sorry that you have my abused truck. But actually, hit me up. This is a Toyota pickup truck we're talking about. So I bet that thing's fine, but it's running great. I love Toyota pickup trucks. I've owned two. And if you wanna know more information about them, why don't you watch this episode of Up to Speed? It's got maybe one of the best intros we've ever written, Comedy Gold. I'll make a deal with you. If you don't chuckle just a little bit, just a tiny little chuckle, and I'm talking about like, even if it's inside your heart or your, your mind, you don't even have to vocalize it. I'll, I'll give you one of my dirt bikes. Ugh, I don't know, that was a bad deal. <laughs>